All right, so chapter 10 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge is going to be uh, weight and balance. Uh, so when we fly an airplane, we have to make sure that uh, the airplane is within the maximum weight that's specified for it. Uh, we also have to make sure that it balances uh, within the specified range. So when we talked about um, aerodynamics and how wing works, we talked a little bit about stability and how the stability of an airplane in pitch comes from that opposition of forces, the, uh, the airplane wanting to pitch down because of the uh, center of gravity being a little bit forward and the tail pushing down to bring mm -hmm. the nose back up. Uh, that opposition of forces makes the airplane stable. Well, if the center of gravity is too far forward, uh, then we won't have enough elevator authority on the tail to uh, keep that nose up. If it, the uh, center of gravity is too far aft, then we won't have that opposition of forces because the tail, if the center of gravity is too far aft, the tail won't have to be creating force downwards. It'll be neutral. That's when you start or porpoising even, and right. you lose the, it's right. hard to fly. And from your experiences in the RC world, I'm sure you know exactly what happens when you get an airplane too Most far. Most heavy out. plane will fly a tail heavy plane will fly once, is what right. I say. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's our pneumo That's our that's our saying. Yep, fly yep. once, and uh, you're not too far off with that. Um, so in order to make sure that we're within our center of gravity uh, and our weight limitations we have to do a weight and balance calculation before each flight to make sure that uh... you can't do like us just hold it up on your fingers <laughs> that's how we check our our cg we yeah just, we have a mark on the yeah. plane we just stick our fan up that looks good let's go flying it chief's a little bit heavy for that yeah it'd be kind of hard to do <laughs> so uh... when we uh... calculate our weight and center of gravity um, we uh... have a little form that we use um, and in the uh, chief handbook here, um, uh, it shows in our, our uh, weight and balance section, it s tells us what the standard empty weight of the airplane is. Now, of course, in the case of the, uh, ex the particular chief that we're flying, we would have to use the w uh, empty weight that's listed on the weight and balance sheet in the airplane. The, s the gross weight of the airplane, which is the maximum allowable weight, and that's the same for all chiefs, all that would be the same on the paperwork in the plane right, as it is here. Right. And then the standard useful load. Useful load is simply the gross weight minus the empty weight. The, so is the empty weight count fuel? No. All right. So the total weight that we're flying when there is R2 bodies plus fuel. Right. So and all of that can't add up to more than 460 pounds. In the case of an airplane that has standard weight, yes. Now, obviously, our chief that we're flying. Um, may not be exactly that standard That's weight. In, so in the ballpark. Though. Right. But we have to uh, use the weight and balance sheet in the airplane to get the standard weight uh, in order to... So by the time we put all the fuel and us in there, we're pretty much right at the edge. Pretty much. Pretty close we're to pretty, the... Pretty close to the uh, close to four. maximum because we're carrying about usually 10 to 12 gallons of gas on an average and flight. That's about 72 pounds. Ish. Yep. So we're, we're, yeah, uh, we're right, close. right up close to that gross weight, the two of us. Um, and we also have, so those are our weights, and to figure out our balance point, we also need to know where those weights are, because uh, if you look at, in the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, they have a nice little diagram here uh, in, on page 10-6. Uh, figure 10-4 um, is just sort of a teeter-totter, and in order to get the airplane to balance, around that uh, proper center of gravity point, just like a teeter-totter, we have to make sure that the weights uh, balance out. So a couple of terms to talk about. The datum point, or the, the fulcrum of that teeter-totter, um, is where all of our uh, distances are calculated from to determine where the weights are on the airplane. So in figure 10-2 here, you see how the uh, they show what the CG range might be. It looks a little bit wide for uh, on a real airplane. A real airplane would be a little bit narrower than that, but for illustrative purposes, obviously, they have to make it wide enough that you can read it. Um, the arm is how far forward or aft of... So distance from that pivot point. The, of that 
uh, from the datum point, which may or may not be the pivot point. Oh, that's not the, so. Yeah, so different airplanes measure a different datum point. Oh, so they just they have they just have a very uh, a right. spot that they have on the plane. It's not necessarily where the center of gravity really is. Right. It's just a place for measurements. Correct. It's okay. at the zero point for all the measurements. Okay. So in the case of this uh, weight and balance diagram in Figure 10-2. It looks like it's right about the instrument panel is where they put the uh, the datum point. Different airplanes can have it in different Do you places. Know it is on the chief? On the chief, I believe it's the front of the prop spinner, the very front of the Whoa, airplane. Oh, they go way up front. Yeah, which means on the chief, I don't think you'll ever find a, a uh, well, actually, no, it's not because let's see where they do. So, main fuel negative six inches so it looks like the datum point on the chief is just behind them just just ahead of the, the instrument uh, may, maybe the front of the wing I'd have to look at the uh, the weight and balance sheet for the chief um, to see what the datum point is but I believe it's it's right around there the front of the wing or that'd, the, that'd be a good the spot yeah the landing gear or something um, so depending on where the datum is. So some airplanes, the datum, I've seen an airplane, I can't remember what kind it was, but the datum point was uh, 72 inches forward of the prop spinner. It's like, why? <laughs> okay. I can't you just recalculate and call it the prop, get the prop bolts or something. Right, just, exactly. I don't, I don't, but I think the engineer wanted to play with the pilots. Yeah, that's, that's how they chose to calculate it, so whatever. Um, but you can see uh, in figure 10-4 here um, that in order to balance, so if we have in their example a 50 pound weight 100 inches to the right, well in order to balance that out we could be, you know, make things easy and put another 50 pound weight 100 inches to the left, but let's say that, you know, the edge of the figure here is as far left as we can go so we don't have enough space to do that, so in order to balance it they tried putting a hundred pound weight 25 inches uh, to the left but that was still wasn't enough so they had to put a 50 pound weight 50 inches to the left and how we calculate this it shows in this figure so the arm being the distance from the datum times the weight mm -hmm. equals your moment okay so the moment is essentially how much twisting force or how much torque how many pound inches yeah, however, the calculation it, is it's, but it's applying to the aircraft. So in the case of this 50 pound weight, 100 inches to the right, well, that's 5,000 pound inches to the right. So the 100 pound weight, 25 inches to the left, is 2,500 inch pounds on the left. So that still leaves us with a 2,500 inch pound imbalance, and. Uh, so they added a 50 pound weight, 50 inches, to the left to give you another 25. So now you have 5,000 on the left and 5,000 on the right. And in theory, they should sit and right. sit flat. And you've balanced it. So they have a few more examples here. Um, but uh, for the sake of uh, what we're doing here, let's go look at the chief manual. So the example problem that we have here. The aircraft in this example weighs 790 pounds. Okay. The arm, that is where the airplane balances, is at 14.5. So that's 14.5 inches aft of the datum. So that would make sense for it to be right at the front of the wing where the datum would be. Correct. In somewhere in that vicinity, because that would be right close to the cord, the thickest part, which is usually where the CG is, right? Right. So, uh, and the moment. If you multiply and if you can get your calculator out, you'll find 790. So let's try this. 790 times 14.5. 11,455. Which indeed is what is listed here for the moment. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of the weights and all of the moments. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you divide the moment total moments by total by weight. the weight you get the arm so that's how we figure out where the center of gravity is if we look on the next page of the POH which is the last page here you can see that the allowable center of gravity range 
goes from about, uh, about 12. 12 to about 23 that's inches. Pretty, that's a good 11, 12 inches. Right. So, and you can see it goes from 800 pounds, the wall of weight goes from 800 pounds up to 1,250 pounds, mm -hmm. which is the maximum gross weight of the airplane. So, if we, uh, in this example, um, and here we have arms calculated for, for uh, or arms are given for each other component of the weight, and the moments are already calculated in this example. But for the pilot and passenger in this example, the arm is 23.5, mm -hmm. so that's where we're sitting on the seat in the chief. And Does in it this matter if we move the seat up and back? It does, and you'll find that... Because I'm short and we've had to move it up. Yep, you'll find that the uh, back in it's in the weight and balance oh, okay, section. They give you so the pilot and passenger anywhere between 21.5 to 25.5 uh, as the arm. So 21.5 would be with the seat all the way forward. 25.5 would be with so the seat for our all calculations. Way back. We're close to all the way forward, so we should probably be using like a 22, 22, 22 and a half, something yeah. like that. Um, but in this case, we're using 23.5 in the example, or halfway in between. Yeah, in the example, uh, with a weight of 360 pounds. That's two people at 180 pounds. That's a little bit lighter than the two of us, I think. But uh, mm. eh, it's, it's pretty close. Pretty I'm close. 170, so yeah, about 195. And then we're right smack on it. Yeah, we're on it. Um, See, it was meant to be. We're the perfect weight for the chief. <laughs> so then, if we uh, multiply our weight by the arm we get a moment of 84.60. Baggage in this case shows 10 pounds which isn't too far off of what all the No there's a little bit of stuff in the back plus the cameras we're adding. Log books in the back and the uh, couple extra headsets back there mm -hmm. um, and the arm is 48.5 so 10 times 48.5 is 485 pound inch, inches. Inch, inch pounds. And then uh, the fuel, the main fuel tank. In this uh, example, we have uh, 90 pounds of fuel. It's 15 gallons, right? Yep. Which would be a full tank in the in the main fuel tank. And the arm is negative six, so the moment is negative 540. This has no fuel in the ox tank, but that would be an arm of 61. So that's way in the back. Yeah, it's behind us. Right yep. There. And so in this example, 790 pounds empty plus 360 pounds of people plus 10 pounds of baggage plus 90 pounds of fuel is right at our gross weight of 1,250 pounds. If we add up all of these moments, and why don't you go ahead and do this? So 11,455 plus uh, 8,460. Uh, plus 485, yeah, minus 540, and let's see what that gives us. Oops, I was waiting for another number. 19,860, which is what we have here. If you divide that by 1,250, 15.88, 15.88, which is if we look at our our uh, envelope here for the center of gravity is pretty much right in the middle for a nap. We're right up at the top because we're at gross weight. Um, so in theory, if we use that back tank with eight gallons in it, we would be overweight. Yes. Because of us. Yep, and that's why the last time we flew I made sure it was empty. Right, you pulled a gallon or two out of there, didn't yep, you? Yep, I did. And I pulled a gallon or two out of the back and I put it in the main tank. Crap, I remember seeing you do that. That's just. We, we're pushing that plane right at the, at the limits, aren't we? Yeah, no, and of course that later iterations of that design came up to gross weights, you know, 16, 1700 pounds, so. Yeah, I think the plane's a little over-engineered. Yeah. Um, so in theory, if I ever get to the point of doing a cross-country flight in there, I could mm -hmm. throw weight, I could throw fuel in the back because I will be alone. Correct. And then you'll, I would, but you'll still have to just make sure that you're not out of the right. Right, I would, I would still have to fall within this graph. Here. Right, so but I would be able to put that eight four four hundred eighty not four hundred eighty eight times six, sixty. Yeah, that's four hundred eighty. No, that's not. 
eight pounds times six, 48. I would 48. be able to put that 48 to 50 pounds in the back. Yes. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't throw us off. We'd have to recalculate and figure it out. Correct. But I would be able to carry that extra right. weight because I don't have a passenger. Correct. And then you'll notice uh, on this page also it gives you a blank weight and balance form that you can use to calculate. Now we're going to use it. Uh, we're going to just use a pad of paper here to mm -hmm. do that. So let's. Uh, so would it be a good idea? Or is it something that would be a smart idea to maybe copy this and laminate it and have like a pencil that you can write on it for each flight to make sure? Like if you're taking somebody with you? Yeah. Might or not. if you're going to take some baggage just so you, you don't use the one in there? Sure, we could do that. Um, or you can just scribble on a piece yeah. of note paper like this. And like once we've done it a few times, like we know the numbers, do. right? Uh, aircraft, for, let's start with the first line here. Aircraft, weight is uh, 790 pounds. The arm that we had for the standard aircraft was 14.5, uh, which gives us a moment, uh, should give us a moment of 11,455. You can check my work if you want. Uh, nope, seven, we did that on the one before. Yep. So. Pilot and passenger, uh, we said we were about 360 together. Yep times 22 I believe we used. Yep, we were going to do 22 because we put the seat up. Yep. So that's 7920. 7920. 20. Baggage I think we said five pounds just for that uh, log book clipboard in the back. Yep, times 48.5 is 242.5. 242.5. Main fuel, I think we said 12 gallons times okay, 6 pounds a gallon. 12 pounds times 6, we should know that. Six 72, 72. 72 pounds is uh, at negative 6 for the... Uh, times minus 6. Negative 432. 432. And then the ox fuel, is zero. 0. 61 is the arm, but moment is also 0. So the total... Let's add this up. So 790 for the airplane. Plus 360. For us. Plus 5 pounds of bag, you know, the plus log book in the 72 back. 72. Pounds of fuel. 1,227 pounds is uh, weight of the airplane. So this is good news. So uh, uh, we've done weight and balances when we've been down at uh, Brooklyn when we've been flying. We haven't showed that because we haven't done showed the pre-flight yet. At some point we'll get to show the pre-flight on video. Uh, but 1,227 pounds confirms once again that we are below the maximum. By 23 pounds. That's what I see. And uh, now we just need to add up our moment. So 11,455 plus 7920 plus 242.5 minus 432 19.185.5 divided by our 12.27, correct? Yep. 15.63. 64. Whatever. So 15.63. So then we can go to our chart so here. Our weight would be right there. Yep. And 15.6 would be somewhere in there. Yep. So that shows us. So we're right in line. Now, question. Yeah. How much do these cameras affect it? Because um, we're carrying probably another four to five pounds of cameras. Mm -hmm. Two on the windshield, one over our head, one out on the wing. Yeah. So let's see. So the one out on the wing is should be pretty much right on the center of gravity. Yeah, that one's probably don't. Those Negli we don't have to worry about. Negligible. We just have to worry about that that camera out of the wing with that little tiny mount you've got probably just weighs one May, pound. Maybe a little little over a pound because it's all metal. Yeah. So it over, would affect that a little, little bit. A little over a pound. Um, then we have the one that's mounted behind us over the baggage compartment. That would be at an arm of 48.5. That's probably 40. That's probably about a pound. A pound and a half maybe. pound and a half. So 1.5 times 48.5 is 72.75. Yep. And then the two on the windshield, which would be right on the datum line pretty much. A little bit forward of it, maybe minus two, minus three. So we've got basically another 73. 
And then and the two cameras. Two pounds. Yeah, t two pounds times. times. I mean, we're talking small numbers yeah, here. Negative two, maybe. Minus two. T negative, not point two, two times negative two is negative oh, four. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that'd be minus four. Minus so base four. 69 add yeah. to our. Um, minus 69 plus 73 is. Well, I was thinking 73 minus 4 is 69. Yeah, 69. So that would be our, we would add 69 more to our moment. So it would be 19, 185, just plus 69. Yep. And then divide that by uh, 1,232. Yep, because we had to. Yep. So we're sitting at 15.62, which is still okay. Still going to be well within our range, and we're still only at... Uh, we're only added like five pounds. Yeah, 1,232, which is still below our 1,250 right. so pound. Negligible, but right. if we were on the edge, it could yeah. throw us off a little bit. It could, but... Um, we should have my, farther forward. If we throw our coats in the back, that probably throws it off more than... That's why I bad. leave my flight kit in the car. Right. So that pretty much shows how to do a weight and balance calculation. Um, for a um, Cessna or a Piper that is a four-seat airplane, has seats in the back, you'll just have one more line here. For we have pilot, pilot and passenger line here that you'd have rear passengers as, a line, as an extra line in the calculation for a Cessna or a Piper. But other than that, uh, that's pretty much how you do a weight and balance calculation for a small training aircraft. Very interesting. I always wondered how the the arm was measured because yeah. I wasn't completely sure. I'm one of those people, okay, I know it's a datum point. Tell me where my datum point is, then it will make right. sense. Your datum point is wherever the designer chose to put right. it. Right, and we think, <laughs> we think on the chief that's the yeah. leading edge of the wing, which would yeah. be a, a logical place right. to put it based on that minus six for the fuel tank. Right. Yeah. So it's either the leading, well, the leading edge of the wing is over the cockpit. So Slight it's in front of where we forward, sit. Yeah. So that would, my, I would bet you money that that's where it's yeah. at. Cause it and we can confirm sense. that at the, uh, the weight and balance sheet in the airplane will actually te show us tells us exactly where that is. Okay. I understand this whole, you got to balance everything out. Yeah. It's got to be within the range. I yeah. get all of that. I just was, some yeah. of the terms and where they came from. Yeah. That I wasn't sure of, and so that really helped make that more yeah more clear or less. I mean, buddy. this is this is the level of math that we're dealing with as pilots here. I mean, you see, it's not. I mean, this is like grade school. No, kind I've of math. I've seen some math formulas right. in some of this stuff that makes <laughs> my brain hurt. Yeah, this is this is your simple fourth grade. Yeah, <laughs> you know, multiply, divide. If you can if you can multiply and divide. You can do this. Pretty much. Calculator helps because you're getting in some big numbers, but yeah. it's nothing you couldn't do on paper if you Ex know your multiplication tables. So. Exactly. Exactly. So. so that pretty much uh, concludes uh, weight and balance. Um, they do show here on page 10-8, uh, figure 10-8, um, this is how Cessna does it. Um, so they pre -calc they pre-multiply the weight times the arm for you and just give you the moment on this graph and then rather than charting like the uh, the one for the chief here shows um, in uh, arm in inches on the bottom and weight in pounds on the, the vertical mm -hmm. axis well the Cessna one shows moment in inch pounds along the bottom and weight along the vertical axis. You just got to read what your x and y means. Right. It's so the only difference the calculation is still the same. The calculation is is still the same. It's just that they've already done one step for you and that, that just changes the shape of the graph slightly. Right. And as long as you fall inside that box when you do your Exactly. It all works. Exactly. Um, some airplanes use these huge long tables like this. Um, I Seems like a lot of work, but then it's probably a lot bigger plane. Uh, yeah, I think some of the pipers do it this way. To me, it's easier to just mu multiply it out myself. Okay. I have a question for you as an airline pilot. Yes. I've been on flights mm -hmm. in a fairly decent sized plane, probably about like the ones you fly, the what is it, the CR 20s or the, the, the commuter, you know, 80 passenger commuter jets. Mm -hmm. That's the kind you fly, right? More or less, yeah. yeah. I've, I've been on some of those flights where they made somebody get up from the front and move to the back or the back to the front. Yep. Is it that close? 
-hmm. How do they know that? We have a computer in the in the uh, jet that will do those numbers. So for are us. there like little scales on the shocks or something so it know it can sense the weight? No. What we do is uh, for larger aircraft, uh, the FAA has standard average passenger weights. Right, and it's usually a lot less than what humans are now. But well, they've they they did just adjust them. Um, based on some kind of census they took mm. um, about five years ago. What is so, it now? Uh, last I checked, I think they're using like 190 pounds. Okay, it used to, to be 170. Yeah, but you have to consider also that that average includes, you know, men and women and kids and, you know, it all averages out. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. So you got you got a computer on board and you like feed in the seating chart where people are sitting and right then, and, and then it, it kind it of figures it out. That. I was wondering if there might be some kind of scales built into the shock so as it's no. okay. And then one other question about weight and balance and I don't know if you know this or figuring the CG out mm -hmm. stuff. When they a mechanic figures out where the CG really is on yep. a plane. Yep. Do they have a special scale, or they got some big arms that hold up, and they put the wing on there, and they see where it balances? Um, usually, you weigh at each landing gear. So you put some scales on the ground, you put a ramp up to the scale, you roll the airplane up onto the scale, and you take <clears> a reading from each wheel, and you know where each wheel is, mm -hmm. and then you calculate by the moments and stuff uh, yeah you so you so you, the tail drag will be a really big moment <laughs> right or the well the arm you the know arm. You, it'll be a really big arm yeah you, you you know the arm you know the weight and just like we did here you can multiply the two together together to get the i was moment. wondering and i know in the rc world there's a couple companies for people that are into the really hardcore yeah really big stuff like quarter yep. scale and third scale and yep. half scale and stuff they actually have a set of three weights that you put out on the ground, hook up to a computer, and you put your mm -hmm. plane on it. And it helps you dial the center of gravity in perfect yep. for that plane. I was wondering if there was something like that yep. for in a fact, full si size plane. In fact, our EAA chapter here in Madison has a set of scales that members can borrow if they're just finished building a home built airplane and they need to weigh it. So it's and, a very similar thing. And so they just they put scales under each. Now the airplane also has to be level, so in the case of a tail dragger, you put the two main wheels on scales on the ground and then you have to pick put, the rear up. put the scale on top of a ladder or something um, on the, ba the back, on the back the and then put the tail wheel up on that to make sure the airplane is level because if it's not level, that affects how far forward or right. back the wheels are depending on the and angle of the they landing gear. have some calculations, they do some adding and subtracting. It's basically just the same as we just did right here. Except there's, it's simpler because there's on, they're only doing it for one line. <laughs> right. And right. I was just curious how they use that to figure out right where that center of gravity line should be on that wing, you know, to, what, to where you know it's balanced right. But you're usually getting that from the factory, aren't you? Correct. So what you're talking about is actually, and we get into this more when we're calculating center of gravity for larger aircraft, you calculate the center of gravity, you express the center of gravity not as an arm anymore, but you... Uh, express it as a percentage of the wing cord, so the distance from the front of, front to the back of the wing. They call mean aircraft cord, and they mm -hmm. say mean because wings can be different shapes. Right. So you take the mean cord, the, the middle of the area of the wing, mm -hmm. and uh, what percentage forward or aft of that the center of gravity falls. Um, now, what percentage of the mean aircraft cord the center of gravity should be at depends on the shape of the wing, both the plan form as you look at it from the top and also the airfoil, the cross section as you look at it from the side, um, and also the size of the tail. A larger horizontal stabilizer allows for a wider center of gravity range because it mm -hmm. has more authority, it can stabilize the airplane more effectively. Um, and it can provide more downforce for forward center gravity condition. Um, but uh, in larger aircraft, you would exp instead of expressing, you know, instead of saying your center of gravity is at 15.63 inches aft of datum, you would say your center of gravity is at 2.35% uh, forward of the mean aircraft cord. Okay. The mean aerodynamic cord, excuse me. Um, okay. And that's how you would calculate it. That's a more 
precise and more specific way of calculating the center of gravity, then in this you're, you're simply trusting that the designer knows what that range should be. Right, I was and just always wondering how they figure out where it's supposed to actually be. Yeah. You know? And that gets into the, the airfoil. And you can, it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of science that right. Is you can, beyond you what we're doing. you uh, you get into uh, uh, things like um, the coefficient of lift, the coefficient of moment on a specific airfoil, uh, and that is affected by the wing plan form. And you can do an algebraic equ uh, equation, which will tell you in the RC world if we're building a plane right. from scratch on our own design, we usually go for thirty percent back for the leading edge, right. or the fattest part of the right. The and thirty percent is just for a start, and then you adjust it until it flies right, and right. Then you got it. Thirty uh, percent is. Uh, reasonable number for most it'll get you in the airfoils. areas it'll um, get you in the vicinity usually. different airfoils have different optimal positions oh, yeah. anywhere from maybe 18% to 36% depending on it all matters on if it's swept wing or what exactly 